Hello there adventurers and welcome to Wally DM. Today we're going to take a look at the top five recommendations for third party books that you need to have on your bookshelf and along the way to give his top five and help me present a few of these books is Mr. Trask. Hi there Wally, thanks for having me. And for those of you not familiar, Mr. Trask has his own YouTube channel where he reviews third-party content. So a lot of these books that we're going to go over, I'm going to put links to his videos below so you can get more information from him. So you ready to do this? Yes. Uh, like I said, before we start recording, I was born ready. So uh, let's just do this. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. So we're going to jump right in. And we've broken these down into small categories. We're going to go over our favorite bestiary, our book for players, our book, our book for DMs our favorite hidden gem and our favorite adventure module so uh let's jump right into it tell me as far as a bestiary goes if i'm a dungeon master what book needs to go on my shelf bestiary for me was uh, the absolute hardest uh pick because i have a lot of bestiaries and i love bestiaries and when i'm bored i love just sitting down flipping through a bestiary that's one of the main things i love doing um, and although I was leaning towards Cobalt Press because they have three very good uh, uh, um, bestiaries, there is one bestiary that remains a little bit under the radar for a lot of people, and that is the uh, ultimate bestiary, Revenge of the Horde by uh, Nord Games, uh, which is for me an absolute blast to... You know, I... I just look at which bestiaries do I use the most, right? Which which ones do I find the most on my table when I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons? And this one must be one of the most used for me because um, basically it's a bestiary about like the common uh, beasts we know uh, when we play lower level Dungeons and Dragons, like kobolds, um, orcs. Uh, trolls, uh, 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 goblins, stuff like that. So the basic stuff, but they just give them um, new abilities, they give them new challenges, they give them new lore, and they really go deeper into those uh, beasts we as players often see as just necessary evil we have to uh, kill to uh, to get the job done, right? We often mm -hmm. see them as just being in the way and we need to kill them to feel, feel he uh, heroic. And the creators, Nord Games, just created more of the lore of it. And there's just, just so much they do right. Like, for example, um, they have a, a um, uh, like a treasure box, like a treasure a table for every creature in here. Not like every creature type, but every creature in this book has like its own treasure table. So every time you kill one of these, you get to roll like a D6 or a D8 or whatever. And sometimes you find nothing on them. And sometimes you find something very interesting on them. For example, my favorite beast out of here must be the flying kobold. Yes. Okay. There is a flying <laughs> kobold. It's a kobold with wings who can barely fly, but they can fly. But they throw like flasks that function as grenades, like uh, Molotov cocktails. And every now and then when uh, people search these bodies, they can find those grenades put them on them and throw them in combat. It's that stuff that just really goes really deep into this book. Like there's also gnolls in here and there's like these rat people in here. I just love it. All kind of horde creatures and I absolutely love it. It's not the thickest one, but it is and it just all tied together. It's, it's not like a book full of all kinds of different creatures. It's mm -hmm. all tied together into one uh, thing, Revenge of the Hordes. So that's my beast cherry. Man, you have me sold on flying kobolds with grenades. I mean, that sounds awesome. I, I mean, and, and you're exactly right. A lot of times you go in and especially for first level characters, you just fight goblins or fight kobolds. I mean, this is like taking it to the next level. You, you introduce flying grenade throwing kobolds or, or things of that nature to your party at first level, man. You're... You're stepping up yeah. as a DM, that's for sure. Well, I introduced them. I introduced them at sixth level. While while my uh, players were in the mine card, going into a spiral <laughs> down, down, they were in the mine card, and in this in this stupid thing, like the mine card went like this. And in this stupid thing, they these kobolds were hanging and just throwing grenades that's at them awesome. while they were going like <laughs> I don't know, 100 miles an hour in this mine card. The grenades were just flying, and they were trying to shoot them out of the sky. It's that kind of stuff, ridiculous. Fun D and D stuff that just comes from a book like this. That's insane. I love it. Very cool. And I, I had to get that from my shelf. I don't have it. Very, very neat. Um, so since you sidestepped Cobalt Press, I'm going to have to bring it into the fold, and I'm going to show a couple of them. Uh, like 
you said before, Cobalt Press has excellent B series, and this one here is Toma Beast 2, which I want to show first because even though I haven't used this one a lot, it does have a Diminution Drake in it, and that was a creature created by yours truly. So I actually have a monster in this book. I was one of shameless plug. Yeah, shameless plug. <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> Go check out my monster. Uh, no, but seriously. Um, there's like 50 backers that were able to submit a monster, and mine was one of them. So, Diminution Drake in here, Toma Beast 2. But my absolute favorite is the second book of the set, and that is the Creature Codex. And there are just so many cool monsters, and they're just unique that I've been able to use. There's like keg golems. There is a rug where a serpent comes out of it. I, I've used that before. And, and I've just found like the most creative monsters in here. And, and very rarely do I go to the players or the uh, fifth edition monster manual anymore. It's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, I've used a lot of those. Every once in a while, I'll pull something out of there. But then I, I just I just turn to Kobold Press because there's just so many unique things that, that players are not going to expect. And they're, they're not going to be able to metagame mm -hmm. because there's, there's stuff that they haven't been able to see. Now, in the very first yeah. book, very first book, the Oculus Swarm, that, that's my absolute favorite. It's got all these eyeballs that swarm around, and it just, it yeah. like swarms around you, gets in your space, and it tries to suck your eyeballs out, and it's a lot of fun. Well, out of the three uh, Beast Cherries that Cobalt Press has, like the Total Beasts 1, the Creature Codex, and the Total Beasts 2, the Creature Codex has to be my favorite also. So you showed the right one when it comes to me. Uh, isn't that the one that has Baba Yaga even? Stats for Baba Yaga, if I'm not mistaken. It, it uh, might. So, there's like 400 monsters in here. So Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, uh, that's like if I look at the monster manuals or like the uh, the Beast Chariots that I have on my table, the most, like, like I just said, Revenge of the Horde, mm -hmm. uh, like the... Creature Codex is in my backpack when I have a physical session. Um, <laughs> before all the stuff happens, I have a physical session. Like the, the Creature Codex is always in there. Even if I'm if I didn't prepare a monster out of it, I always bring it because there could be a moment like I have to flip open a Beast Cherry, and that's like a lot of the times that's the Beast Cherry I go to. So that's a very very good pick. Yeah. I like it a lot. Okay, so Beast Theories are a lot of fun, but those are definitely DM type books. If you're a player watching this video, we've actually got a pick for you as well. And you need to grow yourself and get a few things there. And of course, with third party content, make sure you ask your dungeon master before you start customizing your character with those types of things. But Mr. Trask, what do you have for players that are, be that are gonna be like, I need something for my shelf. What do you have for me? I have kind of cheated for this one because um, okay. for the player book, I I actually selected a more of a Dungeon Master book. And also, it's not more of a Dungeon Master book. I know it sounds very weird what I'm saying right now, but I've selected Svillant, which is a Norse campaign setting uh, focused around the idea of Vikings and the 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 uh, Viking lore and like the Norse mythology with like Thor and, and Odin and Freya and what you call it. Um, and it is a setting, a Norse setting, an entire worked out setting. But the reason I chose this for players is um, there is this is the kind of setting book that also has like player options in it. And it has a lot of player options in it. And it has magic items and everything, but it also has like um, uh, subclasses for a lot of classes. It has its one, no, two unique classes so not even subclasses for a class but like unique classes where you are one of those seers that can look into the future and and, and use the spirits spirits are talking to you if you've watched the show vikings you have the seer type dude in the show vikings a blindfolded person that can see stuff you can basically build him uh, with this uh, thing there's new feats in here there's new races in here um and i just think if you want to if, even if you're not playing in this campaign setting, which is an awesome campaign setting, but if you're not playing it, for example, you're playing in uh, Midgard, but you want to crea create a character that just comes from the north, uh, you can really utilize this book uh, and create some awesome characters in here. I created a Viking out of this book uh, because there's literally a subclass for the fighter called Viking in here, which have like more proficiencies when they're on, on water and stuff like that. And it just, it, it just, it works. It's 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 good. It's made by Dream Realm storytellers, which are which is a Turkish company. So it's a Turkish company who creates a Norse uh, mythology setting, which is kind of funny but kind of cool in a way. And um, it's their first real 
big work and together with this they also have like adventures coming out uh adventure path uh, a few physical a few pdf and uh, it just makes sense it's just one of my favoritely written campaign settings with a lot of options for players i absolutely love it now the, does this book also go into the norse gods and and things like that yes 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 like there's there? a lot of, of, of stuff about the gods and they even like there is uh, all kinds of like the 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 lore of the gods but they also talk about where where clerics are not called clerics they actually get a different name and paladins get different names although they function as paladins they actually have a different name and everything so they it's very well it's very much centered around the norse mythology so they go very deep into the gods mm -hmm. uh but also in their own way in their own dungeons and dragons way so you know there it's not like a, a, a copy of the norse mythology because the norse mythology is an a mythology you can interpret it on interpret in your own way so um they did that for dungeons and dragons fifth edition and they did it on such cool and good way that i just absolutely love it yes awesome yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, Viking, Vikings, I mean, I think you sold a lot of people right there when you said Vikings, because <laughs> I, I, I can see that and and seeing into the future. I mean, now if you just multi-class or whatever, you know, a Viking that can see into the future, then, you know, <laughs> but uh, oh, very, very cool book. I like it. Yeah. Uh, for me, I went with a little bit of a thinner book, and uh, this is one of my favorites, and it could actually even be a hidden gem, and this is the Big Book of Backgrounds by PB Publishing. So with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything coming out, it gave us a ton of new options. Xanathar's Guide gave us a ton of new options, but one of the things that's absolutely missing from 5th edition was new backgrounds. So even though we've got all of these new classes, we're still using the same backgrounds. We're still using your sage, your soldier, your outlander, your hermit, your guild artisan, mm -hmm. your charlatan, things of that nature. And what the Big Book of Backgrounds does is it has over 40 new backgrounds. And as a DM, I've went through and I've vetted all of these myself. I, I've, I've read the entire book, which doesn't happen very often because I don't like to read a lot. But this one intrigued me enough that I read through it all. So if, if you want to get a change in your character building, if you would like to pick some different backgrounds, and, and with the backgrounds, you get your personality traits, your ideals, your flaws, your bonds. I mean, I, I build enough characters in fifth edition that I'm kind of tired of using the same old ones. So instead of soldier, sage, and things like that, you can get a prisoner, a collector, an undertaker, a collector, a journalist. I mean, just really cool backgrounds that you can use not only to create your character, but also to help create a backstory. Yeah, cool. I, I I actually think that's very interesting what you say with those back. I often see when, when I'm a dungeon master and people are creating their... Um, their character like the background is always like the one of the last things you know they're creating their characters and like they're almost done it oh oh yeah i forgot i i, I need to pick a background mm -hmm. and that's just because in, at the first stages of the first years of, of fifth edition people were like oh there's this backgrounds that give these light little tiny role-playing edges and and well people are getting bored of them so i think it's a very cool thing that they uh created a book with more uh backgrounds because yeah just I, I when I make a fighter, I almost always go like soldier. Uh, I don't know, and when I make a wizard, I almost always go like with sage or whatever. So I can really see how that book can really add to a game. I actually have a book from the same series, which is the Big Book of Horrors. Okay, here somewhere, and I knew this existed, but I've never taken a look at it. So yeah, uh, yeah you definitely got to pick it up. Uh, the PB Publishing, they've put out some uh, really good stuff. There, there's some really good people too. So. Okay, so those are our picks for our top five as far as a player book is concerned. Now, what about Dungeon Masters? Because there's obviously something that we could recommend for a DM. What do you have for us as far as that? What what does every DM need on their shelf that's geared towards them? This is my absolute favorite book. Okay. Not not like not like only in the this category, but this. If you ask me, what is your favorite book on your shelf? For me, it has to be Tales of the Old Margrave. Oh, uh, by Cobalt Press. Mm -hmm. um, you know I'm a big fan of Cobalt Press. I mean, everybody who watches my channel knows I'm a big fan of Cobalt Press, and everybody who watches my shelf knows I'm a big fan of Cobalt Press. Um, this is, for me, it's their best work, and it's some of the best work in third-party Dungeons & Dragons. It is a magical forest. Mm -hmm. 
like a magical enchanted forest and it's almost like a mini campaign setting on its own it has a bunch of adventures spanning from level one to a level i don't know 11 11 or 12 or something like that i don't know for sure but that's not the main thing the main thing is the rules for the the old margrave which is an um it's, just, it's, it's an old magical forest and there is an entire rule set where you can gain the advantage of the forest or like the disadvantage of the of the forest uh for example i'm just i'm just uh, uh, if you are like doing stuff that the forest don't doesn't like then the forest can punish you in some tiny little ways but it's not like you cannot really put your finger on it and as a dungeon master it is a really fun system to troll your players and my players had so many good laughs for example at one point you're you're running away from a from a from a T-Rex, right? You're running away from a T-Rex, Jurassic Park style, and you're running away. Oh no, there's a T-Rex behind us. And suddenly somebody comes up with the idea, we just grab a branch and pull yourself up and we'll climb we'll cl climb these high trees and, and we, the, 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 the T-Rex cannot uh, touch us. So um, everybody does that. And there's one dude who wants to grab it, but it's just, the, the 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 branch is just a little tiny bit higher you know it's just just like two or three inches higher for that person so their uh, difficulty class they have to make for that role is just like two points higher or three points higher or something and they cannot really put their finger on why for example it, it's it all has to do with your race it all has to do with your class if you're like a druid elf druid then you you get all good points mm. but if you're like sometimes if you're like a barbarian who pees against say trees then then you all get you, you get all bad points and then the force starts doing things for example when you go from one place to another you're walking and you're traveling through this big open forest um you just one person just starts slacking behind all the time and they cannot really and every the other people just have to wait up every time uh, for this person and he's just walking he's like damn there's just roots in the way constantly and there's a rock in the way constantly while these other people are just walking oh well just walking having no problem with it at all so that's kind of the kind of stuff that the old margrave uh does together with uh some very good adventures that that tie into that system that really play off of that system um i ran my my players through this force for like four or five sessions for they were going from a to b and and went through this thing and they liked it very much and i had a very very good laugh with it that sounds amazing i mean who doesn't need an enchanted forest in their world so uh really cool it's almost like a, the fey version of barovia or something that's uh that's really cool um it's it's really it's it's also it's really something you can just pick up and drop in any campaign setting. So it's really built for just, it, it doesn't necessarily has to be a Midgard, which is the Cobalt Press campaign setting, but it, it, it's just perfect for any campaign setting. There's a magical forest there, deal with it. I love it, very cool. Okay, so my recommendation for DMs is a book that I just recently acquired, and that is Sky Flourish's Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Now, I've seen a lot of people re uh, recommending this book in the past, and I never picked it up for myself. I didn't, I, I don't know why, it was just something that I never stumbled upon, but then I finally got it, and reading through it, holy smokes, does this have a lot of great stuff for DMs in there. And, and I see on Facebook, Reddit, all of the forums, a lot of chats, you know, what can I do? I'm a new DM. What can I do to become a better dungeon master? Or, you know, how, how, how do I prep for a game? How do I run a game? How do I do improv? How do I do this? How do, how do I pick my monsters? How do I pick my NPCs? And all of this is covered in, in, in this one book. I mean, it's like the... Uh, it, it's like a guide to the galaxy for DMs. I mean, there's stuff like, yeah. you know, how to take notes, how to prep, how to improv, how to, things to do with your campaigns, with session zeros. I mean, if you want to become a, a better dungeon master, I, I feel just giving this thing a, a read through is going to improve your game considerably. And I am about halfway through it, and I, I've learned a lot. I've been I've been running games for a long time, so it doesn't matter if you're a new DM or a DM that's been been around a while. This thing's got a lot of great tricks up its sleeve so yeah I, I, they might have called it just mr taraz because they kind of described <laughs> my, my my playing style with that title no it's, it's it's perfect because i think a lot of dms especially new dms they over prepare mm -hmm. 
and they forget that sometimes being lazy is the, is just the best way to go and it makes the best stories because coming up with a story on the fly and whatever and having these tricks up your sleeve uh, to come up with stuff um it's just it can be so powerful in the game of dungeons and dragons so i think it's very important that uh, especially new people learn to be it might be a wrong term, but I want to say learn to be lazy when it comes to to DMing. Uh, so I think it's cool to have a bunch of these. It kind of reminds me of the uh, uh, prepared series by Cobalt Press, yes. like yeah. where they have a bunch of like one shots mm -hmm. uh, all lined up. So if you're if you're in trouble and people are like, "Hey, play! We want to play one shot," you just take, pick up this book and tell people you want to. You need to go to the toilet, and then while you're on the toilet, you just read it for <laughs> ten minutes, and then you come back and like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, let's play one shot." I mean, those kind of tricks you have up your sleeve with like a book like that is is it's it's cool. It's, it can be very very powerful. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's definitely a lot of fun, and uh, definitely one of uh, my favorite books now on my bookshelf for sure. Okay, so that was a lot of fun, but we're only three books in. Let's take a look at our fourth choice. Again, these are our own picks for our top five books that every DM needs to have on their bookshelves. And of course, we're excluding the 5e books. These are just third-party books that can enhance your collection and your game. So now I want to take a look at a hidden gem. So this can be a bestiary, an adventure, a player's book, a DM book, whatever you want. Just a book that people are going to overlook and probably not have on their shelves. What are we putting on there today? I have this book here, right here, from a person I never heard of him. It's called Wally DM, for some reason. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's Wally DM's Journal of Puzzle Encounters. Oh, and man. I know we're talking about this on your channel, so people will probably already know about this. And yeah, it's kind of weird that I'm putting this out there, but if you ask me for a hidden gem, this is it. And I'm not saying this because, because I'm talking to you. I'm saying this genuinely because... I am a kind of dungeon master. I like running puzzles. I like running uh, riddles and puzzle rooms and stuff for people to find out. And this is just a collection. I mean, this is your stuff, right? This is your niche on, on YouTube. This is your thing. And you just put it in a book perfectly. I absolutely love the art style of it. Um, and I use a few of these puzzles in here. For example, I use the Promes... Promes Premes Mick, prem, prem, the all the all on the cover. Yes, <laughs> uh, I use it, uh, which uh, somebody now has as a magic item, and they are now trying to buy these gems in order to get it to to make it work. Because I kind of change it that they can always use it to create doors, and I did my own thing with it. But it's Dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons, so I can do whatever. That's right. I want. <laughs> um, so, uh, and I used also the uh, the gas chamber. Oh, in nice. here. Yes. Where yeah, where the players had to escape like this gas chamber, but there was this uh, there's this other and it's very clever. All of this is very clever because there's this this control room where they need to go in, and there's again there is there is gas leaking, but they don't really notice the gas leaking, and then so I think it's all very cleverly uh, created, and I don't know how you come up with all of this stuff. I don't know where you steal it. I don't know. Maybe you bought like a book from the Middle Ages full of puzzles or something. I don't know, but it's just <laughs> you come up with all this this stuff, and um, yeah, I absolutely like it. I use three puzzles uh, at this point from it, but I have a few others that I want to use, like the puzzle with like the clock tower where they have to go down the stairs. Oh yeah. Um, uh, with like the weather and everything, um, I want really want to use that uh, in like a forest setting or whatever. So yeah. Absolutely yeah. love this thing, awesome. and I think you did a great job. And I have a bunch of my Patreon supporters who already bought it. Thank you. Uh, so um, yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And in fact, that is also my selection. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> um, super cool. Uh, no, thank you very much for doing that, and uh, of course, thank you for the review on your channel as well. Uh, so there'll be a link to that down in the description below. And also, just to let everybody know, this is December 2020, and we have just hit the Mithril bestseller. That should be updating oh. on Drive Through RPG. But I just looked at the stats, and I believe we've sold over 2,500 copies now. So wow, yeah, that's, so that's Mithril. Crazy. So yep, yeah, so that award should be going up on that page uh, very very soon. Very cool. So my hidden gem is Nerzugal's Dungeon Master Toolkit 2. Now, Nerzugal actually has a Toolkit 1, he's got a Game Master Toolkit, and he's got a Toolkit 3. Uh, but this one's probably the one that I've used the most so far. And this is written by Stephen Williams, and 
I'm also not just saying this because I know Steven and he's in my Dragon Heist campaign and also a very good <laughs> friend and a very good friend of mine, but his stuff is very much legit. And in this one in particular, we've got five dungeons, we've got five one shots, we've got magic items, we have ideas for random encounters, and we've got monsters. And you can see the thickness of this book here. I mean, just all kinds of, of great stuff. And I would definitely recommend having this series because each one of them is different. And, and if you like puzzles in, you know, hopefully you do, if you're on this channel, you get at least <laughs> 10, you get at least 10 puzzles in, in every book. And I've actually done a few reviews of his puzzles on my channel. And I believe Statue and Key, which is number 53, is, is in this book as well. Uh, the random encounters are really fun. So if you're looking for like the, uh, a random encounter in a forest like we were just talking about the uh, the the menagerie book you could also just go through this book and you could add some extra little random encounters that could just be that it could last for a few minutes or it could just totally go off on a tangent and detour you somewhere else uh, the magic items are fun you've got like the uh, boots of necromancy the bouquet of woe you've got some figurines of wondrous wondrous uh, powers you've got a portable trap some weather orbs where you can pretty much summon a tornado if you want to and all of these cool little items <laughs> and uh definitely i as far as printed books every one that i uh, that is available for print is on my bookshelf so be sure to check that out all you have to do is most of his stuff is on the dms guild and just look for nerzugal and you will find some amazing things to add if you're a dungeon master Cool. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Never heard of the guy, never mm -hmm. heard of the book. But if you know him that well, make sure to tell him to send me a review copy and I'd be happy to take a look. <laughs> Just right. uh, putting it out there because, yeah, it sounds really interesting. I, it looks like one of those big workbooks mm -hmm. uh, for getting your driver licenses or something <laughs> like the thing in like paper of it. Uh, so I think there's, I, there might be a lot of of, uh, of of useful stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, random encounters, stuff like that. For especially for newer DMs, are it's so important to have like a fallback when your players suddenly decide to set up camp in a place where you didn't expect them to. Right. You're like, I need something to happen. That's perfect to have like these tools uh, at your disposal to do that kind of stuff. Absolutely. For me, for me, the basic go-to is just. There's a roper and it kills, <laughs> it tries to kill you or something like that. But yeah, there's a lot of dungeon masters that really still need that, um, uh, you know, that 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 those tools to get to get the job done. And and I think those kinds of books are very important. Absolutely. All right, now it's time to round out our top five. So we've each presented four of our favorite books that you need to have on your bookshelf. Let's look at an adventure module. What third-party adventure module would you recommend for DMs to pick up? Um, I'm going to be completely upfront with you. I cheated. I did too. Because I got two of them. <laughs> oh, there uh, you go. No, I, I, I was going through my adventures and only my printed adventures, of course, like right. uh, no PDFs. And I, I mean, I have a pile of them. They're not on my shelf. There's a pile right there. I cannot show it, but it's right there uh, with all kinds of these things and there's two that just pop out that I almost always grab when people ask me to run a session for a new group or or run a one shot or run a, a mini adventure that has like four or five sessions or something. There's two adventures that I always grab and I cannot for the life of me get it over my heart to choose a favorite. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to show Shadows of the Dust Queen and the Shore of Dreams. Okay. One of them, this one is a one shot. Uh, it is a, a Eastern setting one shot where your players go into an inn run by this beautiful uh, 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 lady who everybody is in love with, as you can see. She's a bard <laughs> and she runs this inn called the Shore of Dreams. And this is a one shot. It's very, very small. I mean, this is one session, a short session, but the art, look at the art. I mean, I just want to show it like... Oh, yeah, that's this amazing. Is, this is just... There's just so much personality going on yes. with with a what they s describe as a as a simple waitress. So that's that's she's a simple waitress, but there's so much personality in here that it's just it works. And I absolutely love it for its plot twists. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. There is a a, a it's simple storytelling. It's basic storytelling, but but simple in a good way. You know, mm -hmm. less is more. There is a good plot twist in here. I ran it like I think four or five times, and nobody ever saw it coming up until now. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I have to say, if you run it, make sure one of your players does not run, uh, does not play a, how do you call those robot uh, player races? Uh, uh, Gearforged. War, war, war forged. Forged. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure your players don't play that, because then the trap doesn't really work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's that's all I'm saying. That's okay. all I'm saying about that. It's just beautifully written. Um, and it is by two of my favorite writers, by the way, very quickly. Oh, it's sure. by JVC, oh, sure. JVC Perry, who okay. is... Okay. Maybe I'm almost in love with the dude because like a lot of my <laughs> stuff on it's like and then there's Florian Emmerich, Emmerich if I'm pronouncing that's a German uh, person who uh, makes a lot of, of great adventures like Chore of Dreams and then there's Warriors of Sehenine which I'm playing right now with my Patreon uh, supporters. Um, so yeah, two very good writers have created a uh, awesome adventure with some cool. great art and then there's Shadows of the Dust Queen. Nice. By Cobalt Press. This is more like three or four sessions, uh, but it is also a contained contained adventure, like, and it reminds me of those classic adventures, those three, 3.5 classic adventures, like, I don't know, uh, Forge of Forge of Fury or the Sunless Citadel, like a contained adventure uh, crawl. And this is just within a dark forest. And there is this queen mm -hmm. that controls the dark forest and corrupts it and your players have to go from point to point uh, to collect stuff in order like shards of a mirror in order to defeat the dust queen but they can choose in which when they do what encounter mm -hmm. and some of them are combat encounters some of them are role-playing encounters some of them are like environmental encounters so uh there's like six shards they need to collect or something um and then at the end, there is this choice they need to make, which will tear the party apart if, <laughs> if oh, you're no. unlucky. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but it is just a very well-written, contained thing. And I can probably run this without the book. That's how many times wow. I've run That's this. Impressive. When people ask me, like, hey, are we starting? Let's start a D&D party. I want to play D&D again. It's like been five years. I'm just like, okay, let's do it. I just put this thing on the table, and I barely look at it. That's how, how well I, I know it. I know some of these stats out of, out of my heart. Out of, you know, it's just... Mm -hmm. It's just that's one of those things I grab standards. So yeah, nice. that's why I want to show it. Yeah, those are super cool. I have never looked at them. I, I don't actually get a lot of adventure modules or anything. Even with the actual 5e published stuff, I've only ever ran one of them. But uh, those definitely sound cool. I definitely want to check out that one-shot one because I'm always looking for ideas like that. And even if you don't run adventure modules, you can always pick parts out of them to throw in your own game too. I think that's what's so fun and amazing about them is if there's a scene in a adventure module that you want to throw in your game, you just take it out and put it in there. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, my adventure module is not here yet because I also <laughs> cheated <laughs> because I haven't Cheater. run I know it's because I haven't run a lot of adventure modules, there's only one that I've actually dug into a little bit, and that was the playtest version of Hecna. Now, Hecna is due to be released in summer 2021, I believe, but I did back the Kickstarter, and by doing so, I was able to get a PDF of the playtest material, and I ran a Halloween one-shot. And let me tell you what, the creativity of this horror carnival like adventure is absolutely amazing there is a creature called the children of the corn and one of the one of my uh, patreons uh, one of my patrons who's also on the discord his character unfortunately met the wrath of these little children as they scale you and grapple you climb up and shove candy in your mouth that has uh, poison on it. So these things are just like hanging on them. I mean, just these creepy little kid looking things with these masks on. And I know that I have just started to touch the surface of these carnival weirdness that is in this book. There's a scene that I used called the game show and we had an absolute blast with that it wasn't a combat encounter or anything there was a character by the name of carson that puts on this game show and we just ran it we we brought one of the characters up on the stage we we, we ran the encounter we had some fun with it he was uh, boisterous and uh you know flamboyant and and just having this good old time because you know he's actually had some people in his audience and it was a way that i was able to give the 
the characters uh magical items that they uh needed to acquire but just a small little dose of this and i am super excited for this adventure module to be released next year that's uh that's awesome i actually did a video on uh on the kickstarter when it was live uh talking about it and just telling people that it might be worth backing and i'm actually getting like the the big box with everything yes. in it i think there's even like a dungeon master screen in it or something which i don't use because i roll in the open but still it's fun to have mm -hmm. um but uh, it reminds me of uh, a adventure i've ran one of my favorite adventures uh, which i have in pdf it's uh, happy jack's fun house mm. which is also mm -hmm. like it's like this typical fun houses like these horror fun houses you see in carnivals mm -hmm. um like it's that, and your players need to go in there to save some children, but there's, there's, there's this crazy clown. Mm -hmm. and let's face it, we're all we're all scared of clowns. So there's this crazy clown that, that has these children, and there's all kinds of weird stuff happening. And I, it just reminds me of that kind of, of thing, like this carnival horror, which is like, it's, it's a genre by itself, mm -hmm. carnival horror. It just became a thing by itself for me uh, because I've never really been into horror mm -hmm. because I am unable to uh, to be on the receiving end of horror. If I am on the receiving end of horror, I will run away and you will never see me again. And I will cry, <laughs> especially if there's little children, little girls with white dresses holding a doll. I will just run away and I will... I just... Nope, not doing that. But I love being on the on the dungeon master side on the telling storytelling end of horror so because i use that that fear that i have myself i use that uh, to to trade that on my players uh, so yeah that's that's awesome uh, i absolutely I, they really liked happy jack's fun house so i'm going to like that party really liked happy jack's fun house they still talk about it. two years ago they mm -hmm. still talk about playing that and so i am going to use hackna to like do that again for the same party, that kind of carnival horror. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that one. I think that's a great pick and I, I, I'm very happy for the fact that you cheated. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, 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 I plan the same thing. When I get that book, I, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think it's going to be a one-shot thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably going to take at least four or six sessions. And I am definitely looking forward to it. I'm, I'm definitely going to find a group and, and run it myself. So those are our top five picks for books that need to be on your shelf. Be sure to leave a comment below. Let us know what's in your top five. What's your favorite bestiary? What's your favorite adventure module? What's your favorite player or DM book, your hidden gem? Now do keep in mind for the list, for our list, these have to be non 5 ebooks. They're going to be third party and they have to be able to be available in a printed version. Now, also, don't forget to go over and follow Mr. Tarask at his YouTube channel to subscribe. He's got all kinds of great reviews there and a lot of the new Kickstarters that come out and products on the DMs Guild you're going to find over there. He's going to review them before they're even available most of the time. Any uh, final thoughts before we take off? Uh, no, I, I really appreciate uh, you having me. Uh, I really, I mean, I discovered your channel not that very long ago. Uh, and I, I've been watching your channel uh, on puzzles. I've been stealing puzzles from you, from your book <laughs> and everything. So uh, I'm a big fan of yours. And um, I really like being here and every chance I get to talk about some of the best books uh, probably if you ask me the same question again, I will probably <laughs> choose five different books. So <laughs> I, I, I really like throwing books around in order to. There so yeah, um, everything I review on my channel, just to address your viewers very quickly. Um, I don't do negative reviews. So I, I only review stuff on my channel that I actually like and that I want people to know about. So um, yeah, if you're looking for a, just a channel that has a bunch of reviews on products that I recommend, then that's the channel for you. So I hope to see you there uh, in the future. Very yeah. good. Yeah, and I've been watching your channel for quite a while too. And uh, always one of the first places I go to check out reviews, especially if I'm, I'm looking to invest in a new book or things like that. And also you've your videos have turned me on to a lot of books that I wouldn't have known about if, if I hadn't watched the videos. So be sure to go over and subscribe to Mr. Tresk and uh, do keep in mind that all of the books that we talked about, I'm going to put links in the description below so that you can go and you can pick them up. And if you're still not sold on our picks, then you can also go to Mr. Tresk's channel. If he's done a review, you'll be able to check out the review. So that is all we have for you today. Be sure to leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you're ready for part two of this video. 
And thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. On to the next. <laughs>